Hello everyone to another day in the workshop. Today uh, we're going to take it a little bit easier. Uh, I'm here because I just picked up uh, another rust converter because uh, why not? And I'm going to do a little test sample today. We're going to be testing uh, Ferrosan, which is like I think it's like three or four euros per liter. Uh, this uh, stuff here which I got from a friend, so I don't know how much it costs, but I have used it before uh, on the lower side there and it leaves like a black protection uh, film, which is very hard to get off and then we will have wood rust converter to see if this uh, stuff is worth, I think this is 30 euros per liter or stuff like that so it's going to be interesting to see how these babies hold up so what we have here is I cut off some cans, beer cans and put names on. I'm going to fill it up with uh, each each product. I have two rust and nut, rusty nuts for each uh, container. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave one as it is and I'm going to water brush a little bit the other one, not, nothing too fancy, and then kind of see how it uh, works against a uh, wired brush, aka clean one and just normal one and kind of see if the higher price justifies the uh, working or is the cheap one still a good option so we will know what to use and where to use in the car so this is uh, the first thing and the other thing is we are now uh, putting together the new tick machine that we bought so we will kind of uh, mess around a little bit to kind of see what it's all about uh, I haven't uh, used a tick machine before so it's going to be interesting learn learn a new skill and stuff like that so yeah let's let's keep on rocking Okay, so the plan for attack is as following. Uh, we have now, uh, we have them in the bath now. So I'm going to kind of mix them up every uh, now and then. And I'm going to leave them in for about, I don't know, 15 minutes or something like that. Then I'm going to take them out and leave them dry. So uh, the tall knots are being uh, wire brushed and the lower ones are uh, just basically rusty nuts inside. Now this stuff here is noticeably like thicker. It's more of a gel. Uh, this is more watery, kind of like milk. And then this is just brown water. So we will see each other in about 15 minutes and check out how they are. So we are now about uh, half an hour in the drying phase. Uh, these are the results. Ferrosan isn't looking too bad considering it's the cheapest of, the, of them all. As you can see the uh, NCH chillout is hanging on pretty nicely because it's a thick li uh, liquid. And this is wood. Not looking too bad but since I didn't want to waste all that uh, rust converter that I put in the cups, I have put some of it on the front and here I put on ferro sand the last time and I have brushed it off a little bit, cleaned it off with uh, nitro, nitro thinner and applied wood and the same on the rear arch. So we'll let it work now because it's a waste to like 
throw it away or stuff like that because um, you know you can still do something with it and we will see each other in I don't know about an hour to check out how these nuts are doing and to see which option works the best so we will kind of uh, adjust our usage of these thrust converters uh, I am starting to think of a system where I'm going to use each one of them because they're not working the same way uh, but we'll talk about this later on okay everyone so our experiment is coming to an end so let's just take a look at these test samples as mentioned before we have the tall nuts that have been brushed off and then we have the lower nuts in this case but I mean lower this that have been uh, dunked in uh, being all rusty now once again we need to point out that this one is the cheapest and then uh, these two are a little bit expensive more expensive okay wood I think 30 euros per liter now this one is a little bit mixed one I have found prices ranging from 20 euros to 50 euros so I don't know but this one is about four euros so let's just ch check them out and let's just let's start with uh, the unbrushed ones now this one is from Wurt it's not the best but uh, it has converted some rust now we have this shallot one this is supposed to be on for 24 hours but ain't nobody got time for that so if we take a look it's very nice and the surface finish is very nice uh, very smooth and it's still working and then this is the Ferro Sun uh, as you can see it has uh, it got rid of a lot of rust but uh, there are still some flakes on now this is where I need to point something out okay so uh, one thing is that actually Ferro Sun this is not rust converter Ferro Sun it's not rust converter, it's a rust removal, so uh, this one is on me because I didn't read. Uh, but the other two is rust converter, but warning area means rust converter, so anyways, they're, com they're a little bit different because this one will get rid of the rust uh, and these two will convert rust into like a, uh, like a black finish that isn't going to rust any further but uh, they will have each purpose, uh, different purposes but this experiment will show you uh, how they work differently and stuff like that so you will know what to use on your project so let's move on to the brushed treated ones uh, because that one is more realistic because most likely you will prepare the surface for the rust converter or rust removal and let's go check out how the results are okay so these are the results Let's start off with the wood. This is what it looks like. It has a pretty nice surface finish. It has eaten a lot of rust and convert the, the rest of it. So this is wood. Now checking out the chalad, whatever this, this one is. I don't know how, how it's called, so maybe I'm butchering the name, but it looks very nice very nice finish really like matte black so i kind of like this one and it's not all flaky but it's a really nice smooth finish uh, it's all black so it has converted and made a protective layer on it and now if we check out feather sun uh, it has got ridden a lot of rust but you can still see flakes on the lower side it should probably be sunk in for quite a longer time but you know I wanted to test them out, them out on the same uh, level so this is the finish now this may be a problem and I think I might have uh, done this a little bit uh, too soon because if we're going to use car spotter more uh, like if we feel another bump then we need to weld and we have tried this with uh, the rear axle where I applied the white shallot NCH or whatever it's called 
and then we had to weld something and it smells super, super bad. Like seriously, you cannot breathe. Your lungs are burning and stuff like that. It's ugh, disgusting. So I hope, I hope we're done with this. Uh, we haven't done the second uh, pass with it, but anyways, if we have to do it, I'm going to take a wire uh, brush attachment and I'm going to just brush it all off because I really don't want to smell that one. And also uh, on the rear arches, make some spots where this, the welds will be and stuff like that so I have to uh, wire brush it off but it's still nice that I have applied something because if you leave exposed metal for too long it's going to rust so this is it I have applied it on multiple spots now let's go out, uh, let's go and discuss the areas where we're going to apply each product okay so as mentioned before we're going to use these products on in different circumstances circumstances uh, so like for the really hard to reach areas like the inside of chassis rails, uh, the front part and stuff like that and also in the rear where it's very hard to do a proper uh, surface cleaning and stuff like that I'm most likely going to use uh, this product because it's really uh, it forms a really nice layer of protection uh, over it and uh, I think it's primarily used because also uh, it's used on the untreated areas and in this test it did the best on the untreated uh, surface so I think on the really hard to reach areas I'm going to use this one because it can eat away rust um, where it's really hard to brush it off and stuff like that so Federsan, the cheapest option there is I think uh, I'm going to use this with dunking and stuff like that uh, with parts that are rusty so it, it's away rust like bolts and stuff like that so uh, this one will be used probably the most in the little stuff uh, and then um, I think I'm going to use wood on surfaces on the body panels of the car uh, just because I really like that it's very it's more uh, Run. It runs a little bit better than this product right here, uh, so you can apply it a little bit easier. It works very well and forms a nice protective layer, so I kind of like that. I'm going to pro probably test uh, the how well the paint sticks on, so you can uh, kind of assess because uh, it says that you should paint over this black stuff, uh, and I don't know how how nice it, uh, the paint eats into this, so. Uh, but I like this these two parts. Uh, so once again, for the body panels, I'm going to use wood because I have bought it and it's, I have one liter now, and you know there's nothing to it but to use it. So this shallot stuff will go into hard to reach areas where it's very hard to shoot at the surface to brush it off and really prepare it nicely. And then this feather stuff for the most of the little stuff and stuff like that for the fast stuff because uh, it eats away rust but it doesn't protect uh, protect it all that well and also it's nice to do like two or three uh, goes with it so you kind of apply it wait so it eats away then brush it off and then apply it once more so it kind of gives you that uh, you, you have to work a little bit harder and it's also uh, on uh, based on the acid so I would like to leave it on like a thin or sheet metal such as the hood or stuff like that so this is what I came up with I hope this will help you and uh, my father has returned with some supplies for the welding machine because we had we have broken uh, we had something broken uh, on the valve so I hope this will stop this stuff will work now because I'm pretty excited to start welding so this is it for this test uh, I'm going to leave them out for a little bit uh, more time uh, they have been sucking in for about an hour I said only 30 minutes but then st some stuff came in between and they have been treating outside for about an hour and a half so it's more than enough time to do a comparison and if something drastically will change I'm going to notify you so I think this is it and we can start to assemble a teak welding machine and maybe start welding So we are now uh, 
learning the TIG welding process, uh, kind of experimenting a little bit, uh, we have bought a TIG welding machine, which is this one, uh, EPO, EPO tools. So it is the model 200P, as you can see here. Uh, it's supposed to be a good beginning machine. Uh, it has uh, up to 200 amps. We are now running uh, 42 for the one millimeter uh, thick uh, sheet metal. We are only learning now on uh, normal sheet metal, so we're not doing any aluminum, aluminum or anything fancy. So it's challenging, that's for sure. Uh, you have to be really careful. You have to like drive the puddle uh, up and down. Be careful not to lose it, and you know when it stuck on the edge, and then you burn a hole through. So uh, it's going to take some practice, but it's pretty exciting. Uh, we are bo both hogging the machine, so uh, you know I cannot wait to get my turn again. So we are um, now going to make some sample plates for uh, my dad, so he can practice, and then. When we switch, he will do some plates for me, and so once you're in, so you can just weld, so you don't have to get up, make new plates, bring them back, and again, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's nice to have them lined up, so, you know, it's a learning curve, uh, and these things take time, but we are eager to learn. Okay, everyone, this is it for today. I have applied uh, black spray paint onto the treated uh, areas where I put on the wood thrust converter. Uh, the, the, the condition of the nuts is pretty much the same where we left off, so uh, everything we said before applies. So we're going to clean this stuff off and we're going to head home. Uh, that is getting some pretty nice welds. Me, not so much, but you know, uh, we're going to learn and maybe even apply this knowledge to the car. We'll see how the learning process goes. So, okay, this is it. Uh, I suggest you go out of your comfort zone too and start to learn something. And this is it. Bye.